you let me know. Ready to roll? Hey, you got to tune to Warp Up KXP 90.3 FM all over the world at kxp.org. And I am stoked that you're here because for the third time, um, and each time is better than ever, we have Auntie Balas in the studios here. So great to have him in. Auntie Balas, would love to hear a song. That's right. Start you off with Fight and Finish, a song about mental fitness. Ma 
walk your back. No, oh no. Don't bend the bend you while you're no, oh no. Use a rule. No, oh no. no exception. No, oh no. Ah. Oh, oh. Ah. Round two. Antibalas live in the studios of KEXP. That is beautiful. Thank you. The new record is Fu Chronicles, which combined two of my favorite things, Afrobeat music and Kung Fu, on a brilliant record. So how did that happen? How did you guys mix that up? My um, time. It was a process, you know, it was a process of, and an intention that finally came together, you know. And it's like a story that's been brewing since I left Lagos. So it was an opportunity to tell my story. I'm very, very grateful, first of all, to the band to even allow me the opportunity to tell this story. The it's a story, yeah, that in the past, it kind of involves all of us, you know, humanity, doing good, and being mentally fit, regardless of any condition you find yourself in. 
how did you sell that? I mean, you know, it's like a band love songs and stuff, but it's like, hey, I got this idea. Um, how did how did they digest it and well, create something like this? First, first it came with the with with having a dojo, a place to actually let this marinate. So it, it was a it was a place where we all got together, uh, where we used to practice, where Dabton had their studio mm -hmm. uh, once upon a time, and it was also the home for the first uh, generation of the band. Mm -hmm. So it's it was uh, it was at, all, at that point I saw an opportunity to to uh, recruit students from my kung fu school. So that process became a uh, reciprocal thing where uh you know opportunity came i started playing in the band you know and then um the rest is history you know and most of the guys in the band have been students of mine from day one those who were the first generation up until this generation so you know who hopefully we show you guys some kung fu or something dude you live in a dream you're like a, <laughs> a, a sifu with an amazing band with a killer horn section traveling the world it was like you know i couldn't script this in a 70s flick you know it's like you're in there right now and uh, these guys are all kung fu masters or students and yep. just uh and just creating something pretty magical that's that's yeah, rad so um so this is antibalas you guys are based in brooklyn right now yeah, we Mostly kind of Hill. spread out. Yeah, okay. Brooklyn main, mainly the folk. The, uh, the and the band came uh, started in 1997, 98. That it was dreamed up at the end of '97. Um, I was playing with Sharon Jones and the Dap Kings. Well, we were the sole providers then, and um, there was a record that the old Desco label put out called the Doctaries, and so I was part of that. And there were some Deep. people part of um, Fellas Egypt '80, but that was just kind of a mystery studio record. And I was like, let's make this into a band but it wasn't, wasn't really my band to sort of do anything with, but kind of continuing that vibe, writing original tunes, also looking at like the Afro-Caribbean history mm -hmm. of music in New York. And um, yeah, as Amayo said, it was very much um, for a long time a Williamsburg band. In the old days of Williamsburg, there were a number of us that could just walk to his house for rehearsals. And we were gigging there, gigging once a week in the city, and that's really where we became a band. But you guys continue to be a band, and it's interesting because in 97... Um, Nerds like me knew about Fela and yourselves. You know, this is pre-Fela um, being dropped by Beyonce at Coachella or something. So it's like to continue with this energy and then also create your own take on it. You know, because it's like a big... Fela's a big presence and getting bigger all the time. What was the thing that allowed you guys to create your own particular uh, variation of that or take on Afrobeat? I think part of it was the distance, the geographical distance, and having a little bit of freedom on one hand to study the form, but then also to be like, to play with it a little bit. Mm -hmm. And then while we were studying the form in the early years, like, you know, in 1998, getting to play with Tony Allen for the first time, or Tunde Williams, the trumpeter from the Africa 70, um, or Kologbo, or like maybe eight or nine people who were part of the Africa 70, Egypt 80, very early on. Uh, meeting J.K. Brema on our first trip, who was Fela's right-hand man, and him being like, I thought this music was going to die after Fela died. Yeah. And he said that, and I was like, wow. you know. So that really, because if he had said, like, you guys kind of suck, I'd be like, all right, let's go play rock and roll or <laughs> something. You know? But having that was like that blessing. It's not something I really talk about, but that you know, there were a couple key people who could have really just been like, you know, this is not for you, and there was that encouragement. So that kind of gave you know, the, the sort of give us the confidence, you know, and then it's the musicians. It's like, you can't do this with one or two people. Everybody has to be really good. And New York is, Brooklyn was a place for that, yeah. you know, to, to find this pool of ta such talented people who are so open and, and rigorous and generous. And that's what it takes to make this music, you know. And continue now. It's like 2020. And it's also, uh, I'll go with the politics a bit later, but pivoting on this kung fu analogy do you guys like fela came up with the system and you guys are creating your own school of that system yeah, uh, you, can say you know that. it's I a work in progress so. there's there's different different yeah. i mean there's the physical part there's the way we composed you know there's there's so many different moving parts that would <laughs> we would be here over a long time if we tried to break that down okay okay <laughs> perfect oh yeah let's get back to some music right now yeah. Auntie Balas live in the studios of kxp the new record is called fu chronicles and it is awesome to have them here Takes me where music of the world matters. The next song is called, <clears throat> actually, it has a proverb attached to it. And the proverb goes, and the African proverb says, the truth in the morning becomes 
daylight with time. This tune is called M-T-T-T, Mother Talker, Tick Tock. Tick Tock, Tick, everybody. Tick Tock, Tick, I can hear you.
can hear you. Oh. Tick tock tick, tick it tock or tick it oh. Tick tock tick, time go they go. Tick tock tick, when you not here oh. Tick tock tick, you go the tick it tock or tick it tock or tick it tock or tick it tock oh. Tick tock tick, I go go lonely. Auntie Balas, live in the studios of KXP. Is it time? It's time. Let's do it.
All right. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you for blessing this space with that beautiful form. Do you have a tune to whoop up right now, wherever you may be? We got Auntie Ballas in the studios right now. The new record is Foo Chronicles. I'm here with uh, the full band. Thank you for being here. Um, Martin, there's much to talk about, but first, let's introduce the band, please. Sure. To my uh, right on trombone, Raymond Mason. To my left on tenor saxophone, Lynn Ligamari. On trumpet, we have Jackie Coleman. Shekere and vocals, Marcus Farrar. On the drums, Kevin Rashka. Congas and percussion, Renaldo de Jesus. Our vocalist, Sifu keyboardist, Amayo. Electric bass, Justin Kimmel. Electric guitar, Timothy James. And electric guitar, Chico Man. All right. Auntie Balas. So, um, when you do Afrobeat, you're kind of making a statement. Um, you know, it's, it's um, uh, a statement on the world, a statement on society, a statement as musicians. You're kind of like going in there with this, like, I have an opinion about something. This is a really interesting time in the United States of America to, to have this. Let's say there's a lot of um, uh, uh, inspiration uh, to this music. How do you guys play with that reality? It's a privilege to be here making music with so many people. You know, we get to travel. Um, I lived in Nicaragua for a year, and it is just very dangerous. Or, you know, some of our friends have been to Mali, working with Malian singers. Friends of ours have had their tongues threatened to be cut out, mm -hmm. you know? So anything that we do is kind of gravy. You know, and at the same time, we're in the United States. There's a lot of things to pay attention to and a lot of fights. And, um, you know, we can we address that through the music, but also just trying to put forth positive vibes and an experience that when people come out and see us, whether they put on a record or come and dance, they're recharging their batteries, you know, because we can't solve all the problems in one concert, you know, but we can give the people this idea that, like, look at all these people working together, functioning as something larger than the sum of their parts. And that's what we need now more than ever to organize, you know, so hopefully the fact that we're organized more or less doing something, you know, more powerful than any of us could achieve as individuals will motivate people to get involved. You know, there's a lot of important things to get involved in right now. Right on. Thank you. Mine. Yeah. Um, just to just point on to uh, rephrase back what you said about the times when mental illness is at its height. This is why this is important. Mental fitness needs to be a subject matter on people's Tip of tongues. People should be practicing. This should be. This is. This is what this is all about. It's about picking up a practice, not just going out there to vote and all that. But what are you doing individually with yourself on the inside? Because that's where it's at. What makes you stay resilient? That's where it's at. What makes you keep going? And like you said, 20 years. What made me keep playing this music for 20 years? Because I understood that in kung fu. You just don't get to your destination. It's a lifetime of practice, right? So this is important for people to know where Kung Fu meets Afrobeat. It's about a lifetime of practice that you need to, you know, somehow find within yourself or through your association, you know. Did you, um, did you discover Kung Fu when you were living in Lagos or did it happen when you moved to DC? Well, actually, uh, I discovered Kung Fu in Ghana, like during the Civil War, a lot of us were uprooted to Ghana. So I was in Ghana, so I had to learn how to fight. And by the time I got back to Nigeria, to boarding school, joined the Kung Fu school, so it was a natural progression. Kung Fu, did a musical play based on Kung Fu. And little did I know that I would be lead singer of a band of the statue. All I wanted was to uh, recruit more students to have Kung Fu disciples, you know, like I had, I had a demo where I was setting my intention to find disciples of Kung Fu, which has now turned into a disciples of the movement of music where Kung Fu meets Afrobeat. Where do you want this to go? Uh, well, I want this to go all over the world. I want this to be the next, you know, the next thing people are talking about. What is your Kung Fu? What are you doing to improve your mental fitness, you know? I want that to be the, the, the conversation, you know? So that's why I think it's, it's important now, especially now that we are going through what we're going through in the country. Right on, right on. Thank you for being here. The new record is Food Chronicles. So everybody's a working musician. This is your life. This well, is not a side hustle. This we're is just standing, at this moment, we're just standing around. But yeah, once we start playing, we're working again. Perfect, yeah, okay. Yeah. Awesome, thanks for being here. Let's hear some more music. Anti Balas on KXP. Oh, 
Balas, live in the studios of KXP. Thank you for being here. The new record is called Foo Chronicles. Come back again. Massive success as always. Uh, Huge shout out to our amazing video and audio team here at KXP. We just passed 2 million uh, subscribers and over a billion views. No small feat. For an independent arts organization. So as you're finishing watching this, go to kxp.org and please continue to support us all over the world so we can continue bringing bands such as Antibalas and um, others we haven't even discovered yet here and share them with you. Thank you so much. KXP, where music of the world matters. Discover new music at listenerpoweredkexp.org.